And welcome into Longhorn Extra this week. I'm Lowell Galindo, still short and not very good at basketball. And here's Miles Turner, our buddy, who is once again very tall and very good at basketball. Wrapping up season number two in the NBA with the Pacers. What would you say was the biggest difference going from your rookie campaign a year ago to this your sophomore year? You know, as the year progressed, things started to slow down. You know, it's uh, especially defensively. You know, you know where to be. Last year in your rookie year, it's almost like you had to guess. Like, okay, am I in the right spot or am I doing this right? You know, as you get into year two and you get more playing time, you just get more, you know, adapt to what you're doing, and it's just a lot easier. There was also a little bit of an adjustment coming in with a new system and a new position for you. What was that like? Um, it was a, a lot different going from, you know, chasing guys around the perimeter at the fours, you know, banging with some of the, you know, the biggest guys down there at the five. So it was, uh, it was, it was pretty tough at first, but you know, like I said, as the year progressed, it got a lot easier and uh, my team was able to rely on me, especially, um, you know, towards the postseason. What is it like playing in the playoffs compared to the regular season? Now going through it twice. Man, the intensity is incredible, you know. So the, it changes. Oh, for sure. You know, the fans are into it the entire game. Every possession, every possession really counts. You never know when, what this one possession might do to end up at the end of the game. So, um, you know, the teams, you foul a lot more, refs don't call as much, so much more gritty. You know, the vets get away with a lot more. I mean, it's just a, it's just an atmosphere that I can't explain. I mean, I just love being a part of it. Do you talk a lot of trash? I'm, I'm more of a low-key kind of guy. Now, when people start talking trash to me, that kind of gets me going and yeah. that kind of sparks me up. But I'm more more mild-mannered, kind of let my game do the talking. How about Tristan Thompson? <laughs> Tristan, <laughs> he has a little streak in him at times. You know, when he kind of starts getting to going, getting gritty, he can. But for the most part, he's the same way. He just kind of goes in and does his job. So what was that back and forth like, knowing that you were going up against uh, each other, knowing that both of you guys are lifetime Longhorns? Yeah, I just know that you know, uh, Tristan knows what I'm capable of, and I obviously know what he's good at. And he's uh, he played his role very well. You know, he's he's, just, he's a great rebounder, and uh, he's, he's a tough interior presence when it comes to that. It's just tough to deal with, but you know, he's got to deal with me too. And it was just a, it was a, it was a battle. Yeah, I think you taught him that. He has to deal with you <laughs> as well. You know what I'm yeah, talking about, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. That was definitely a. Uh, the highlight of my career, for sure, my basketball career. I've, that's uh, I caught him, caught him slipping. <laughs> so, so walk us through that moment. Um, you know, the shot, the shot was short, and um, you know, right before the game, you know, my my man Slim again, Ken Roberson, one of my trainers, he was telling me, you know, you're going to the basket kind of weak, you need to start going up off of two feet, and uh, lo and behold, it was a perfect opportunity. Just caught the ball, just right place at the right time, just cocked it back, and just. Ah, it was uh, the way it happened. It didn't hit me at first until I saw the replay. I was like, oh, yeah. What was it like watching the replay and seeing the reaction from your dad? <laughs> yeah, that, that was hilarious. It was more so funny looking at my mom because she's never really in like the camera and it just caught her at an awkward moment. My dad's always hyping into the game and it's quite funny. You know, my dad's more of a celebrity in Indianapolis than I am. Really? Oh, it's unbelievable. How's that working out? He just, uh, the fan, they, everybody knows who he is. The fans just love him. You know, he just greets, greets everybody. He's always on the big screens at the game. So, uh, you know, I, I love having him out there when everything comes against a couple games. So the season ends and then team president resigns and on his way out, he was asked directly about you and his development, your development. And he said that you have a chance to go down as one of the greatest pacers of all time. But the things you need to work on strength mm -hmm. and decision making with the basketball. When you hear both of those, what you need to work on and the fact that he believes you can be one of the greatest Pacers of all time, what was your response to that? You know, coming from a legend like Mr. Bird himself, I mean, he has, he's garnered all the respect from, some, from everybody in the game. Everybody knows who he is. And, you know, to have him say, you know, such, first of all, such kind things and such motivating things about me, you know, it's huge. The fact that I have an organization, you know, like the Pacers behind me, and they just want to see me develop and they want the, want the best for me. So, of course, I'm going to go out there and do that, you know. Um, you know, I'm gonna take the next maybe week week off, and then I'm right back at it. You know, go back to Indy, be stationed there all summer, just get to work. You know, I know I need to work on my body, my strength, and uh, you know, my game. I already know it's gonna improve because I, I can already see you know the work I'm gonna put in this summer, and I'm really uh, I'm, I'm ready for it. Very busy this summer, like you mentioned, a lot of training to do, but you also have your camp coming up. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I had my first, uh, you know, I call it you know, my back to school camp. And last year it was a great success. And it's at my high school, Euless Trinity. And, um, and so many people came out and showed a lot of love. And uh, it was just incredible just the vibes that I got from everybody. We had, I believe it was ages 6 to 18. So we had everybody there. And 
Gonna do it again this summer too. We're gonna split up the ages this time because you know, as much as I love the little kids, you know, <laughs> they uh, they have a it's a big learning gap from six to eighteen. Years oh old. yeah, definitely. So um, you know, I'm gonna split it up this time, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm I'm involved in everything I do. You know, I don't just put my name on the camp. You know, I'm uh, I'm in the drills and I'm coaching. Um, you know, at the end of the camp, you know, I play a little you know pickup game with some of the guys and. Uh, you know, hopefully I want to get it to go, you know, nationally one day. I want to get it down here in Austin one day and uh, in Indianapolis as well and just uh, as much as I can grow it. But, you know, it's, uh, it's going to come with time. When it comes to growth, we saw Jared Allen grow tremendously in his yeah. progression as a player Definitely. during the 40 acres his freshman year. He's going to the NBA now. From what you've seen of his game, from what you know of him, what do you think he can become in the NBA? Man, if I can do it, I know he can do it because he had one heck of a season, a lot better freshman season than I had. And, you know, the sky's the limit for Jared for sure. I mean, he's a double-double machine. And, you know, I see a lot of myself in him, and I can see, I can see him being better. And he's got to put the work in and do it. And this time is very important for him. I remember when I came out, I started training very hard around this time all the way up into the pre draft process. You know, my name wasn't as high as his at the time. You know, people knew who I was, but they didn't know what I was capable of. I mean... I think I see the same thing with Jerry. I think people, you know, they heard his name a couple of times. But they don't really know what Jerry's capable of. I, I believe you on that. Everybody, everybody in Austin has seen it, and I'm really excited for what's to come for him. He's he's got a he's got a bright future, and I'm looking forward to it. Dunking on him? Uh, yeah, a couple battles. I can definitely see a couple battles going on between us. And uh, yeah, I'm a Jared. I'm gonna call you out. You know, if you if you're in the way, you know. Might just have it. It's coming down. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining course, us course. once again, Miles. And, and look at the feet. I think mine are catching up. <laughs> nah, no, I mean, we, we've no, had yeah, we've had gosh. this discussion many times Goodness before. Gracious. <laughs> at least you didn't break one of my jackets this time. <laughs> Alex, let's kick it over to you. Thanks, Lowell. And in case you're wondering, that's a size 21 shoe that Miles is wearing, biggest in the NBA. By the way, after stopping by our set, Turner headed over to Circuit of the Americas to play a little pickup ball with Migos and Chance the Rapper as they were in town for a local music festival.